Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to Deep Video Live. We are on location here at the Halton Theater. I am uh, your on-air talent today, Jason Nelson and Sparsa Dyer. We are joined here next to the Mortal Kombat machine by Tyler and Crow from Capra. Uh, guys, I got to see you at Come and Take It Live. That was actually my first experience getting to, uh, to peep the band. My, I had some buddies in Datura who opened up that night. And I like, I love this guy. So I was, of course, going to be there. But then I was shocked by everything else. But I, I knew Slow Pulse. I saw them a while back. But to see you guys on stage, fucking rocked it, dude. And Tyler, I met you before the show. Yeah. I met Jeremy, like, at some point during the... You guys are sweethearts, dude. It was, a, it was easily approachable. A great conversation. It was a good time. Thank you. Thank you. So... We can talk. Yeah. So you're rapping. You're rapping tonight. This is, this is the end of it. Yeah. Back at it in June, but yeah, this was 14 days straight, nine states. We, did, uh, we started in Houston and then went all the way to California, Colorado, a, a bunch of places. It's fun. It's fun. It was fun. Is this so? This is year two or three for you? Oh yeah. Is that right five for Capra? Five or six. Five or six. Yeah. Five or six? Damn, right on. Well, since we've been touring, maybe I guess maybe three years, but since we started, since we wrote the first album, mm-hmm. I think it was 2019. Have you guys collected any horror stories from the road? Touring? Horse? Hor- yes, horse stories. Horses uh, on the highway. Oh, I don't know. I mean, just for this This tour, no. It's a good 14 days, huh? Uh, yeah, it was, honestly, this was solid. Yeah, I don't know there's like horror stories on this one. Uh, right on. Uh, there were some cool ones, though. So I, uh, I, at like 3 in the morning in Utah, we were going through I want to go to the Zion Mountains. We right on. drove through it at night. And then at like 3 in the morning, we come across a flipped Coors Light truck in the middle of the medium, just like, uh, I didn't even Which know what was not cool. The road. Not cool that someone potentially got hurt. Sure. And we've never seen so much beer just like in the right. road. Right. I didn't know what it was at first. Yeah. And then, yeah, they brought the snow plows in. Wow. And they had like lightsabers on, which was cool because it was made of Ford. <laughs> Yeah, they, it took about an hour. That was, I mean, that was a crazy drive. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, the, my my guess is that when you, your lyrical content is heavily based on mental health and well-being, that you might find yourself in a situation where you are less enthusiastic about performing a song maybe two or three or four years after it was written uh, do you have anything you can say about that, about that process of being a creator that's expected yeah. to continue doing that? Yeah, that's um, that's actually a really good question. Nobody's ever asked me anything like that. I'd say that uh, when I first started performing certain songs, say like, namely uh, Lucas Preacher, for example, um, it was, uh, I literally would have to separate myself from what I was saying. Because if I would think about the song too much, whenever I was performing it, shortly after we had wrote it or released it, that is, um, I would literally start shedding a tear. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, but so it got to the point where I would just have to kind of go through the motions because if I thought about it too hard, it'd just be too much. Right. Um, but now, um, I still enjoy playing the songs, and I am still kind of in that place where I, uh, I hate to say it this way, but I'm kind of going through the motions for certain songs. Um, but I will say that it almost is like a little like depressing to kind of put myself back in that headspace. Sure. Um, so sometimes it is tough, uh, but at the same time, I think that it is a little refreshing to consider the fact that I have come a long way from being um, in that headspace. Right. So uh, I would say definitely it's easier now, um, despite like the uh, bittersweet nature of it, it is a lot easier now. I'd like to counter something you said there. Um, <clears throat> And, and kind of hit you with the angle that it's not it's not necessarily going through the motions as much as it is matured professionalism to <laughs> have to deal with that yeah. bullshit right like yeah. and 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 really taking the stride of okay maybe it's not bullshit this is what I wanted to do this is a dream we're doing yeah. it let's go it, it is a good move to, uh, as an artist and I don't think that it comes across as going through the motions you are a fucking firecracker <laughs> when that when that shit goes dude look okay guys i'm sorry for this you're gonna get some motion sickness this is me the whole fucking time i'm doing this oh, the whole yeah. time just kind of chasing and following but it's it's very invigorating and you've done this oh, like thanks. the the show i've seen different amounts of people and unfortunately that 360 video will let everybody else see the different amount of people you don't guys you guys don't seem to care you deliver yeah. your shit regardless of what's on the other side of that stage yeah. 
And yeah. uh, for that, I just have to say thank you. That's a good time. That's yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I say we're, we definitely put on the same show regardless of how many people are there. Um, and I would say even sometimes there are times where the intimate shows, we feel a little, maybe a little bit more connected to the crowd and we're willing to put forth um, potentially even more effort, uh, depending. But because sometimes I, we love playing for like the bigger crowds and the festivals we've done. It's been great and it's a kind of a surreal feeling. Uh, but a lot of the time when we do play bigger festivals like that, it's a lot of people that have never heard of us before. And so maybe there's not a lot of people singing the lyrics and uh, things like that. Sure. As much as we love the people, our first time viewers, um, we do connect a lot more to the people that uh, obviously that showed up for us and know our music a little bit more. It's mm-hmm. also weird just to be like separated at the bigger yeah. festivals from like barricades and like you're sure. up, right. like six, seven feet above people. And I just like to be with I like people in my face. I just, you know, sweating with me. Right. It's uh, it's more fun that way. For sure. I feed off the energy just as much as other people feed off mine. So I've got just a few, just three questions left for you here. Uh, The first one is regarding your time on tour. So if I understand, you guys started touring post COVID. Is that correct? Or, or, yeah, we did. We, I mean, we did a few before that, but nothing what substantial. I mean, sure. We did. Uh, we wrote in transmission, and then COVID hit, and we waited. We tried to wait as long as possible to release that album so that we could tour with it, and we still didn't get to go on the road until like November, December of that year. So that that was our first like tour. In, in our so Tyler, I know that you've got some experience that you and Jeremy have been in multiple bands together. I guess uh, this question is probably best answered by you. Do you feel like you came across any noticeable differences pre and post COVID when it came to your tour experience and, oh, and, sure. and, or the types of crowds that you guys saw? Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it was cool before, but it, I think after when we finally got back out there, you know, you could tell like people really missed interaction with other humans, yeah. you know? And then like, I hated the, the whole time we had to do like, we've done a few of those, what do we call them? internet shows oh like a live like a live showcase type thing yes where you're like uh thanks for that uh shout out there uh monty penny number 42 yeah 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 yeah. it was was just (laughs) to me like we we had to do it i get it but like i'm just like i'm going crazy like we're playing a show and it's just like a cameraman and a light sure like there's nobody there and i don't know you know people are even watching or listening that really forces a band to calibrate its acting capabilities like yeah, when you were just, stuck between lights, camera, action, go. Yeah. Okay, do your thing, please. It's like a, telling a comedian to tell a joke, right? Yeah. So, like, even for us, we got out there and we toured, and like, we just went on. It, it was like the energy all came out from years of, or felt like years of staying home. Yeah. Um, and then I think other people felt the same way. You know, they, they got out, they got to let out of aggression and frustration. And, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. So it's like, oh, let me go to a show, just like take it out, you know, go crazy. So, yeah, I think it, it definitely there's differences. Well, uh, I forgot what the other two questions are, so we're all going to be off the head. Really Please. I don't know if the light on this camera is supposed to be on. That boy died. Okay. He's dead you. as shit. Thank you. Yeah, I just realized I was out of battery juice. Oh, you're good. You're good. Okay. But it's all good. Um, where do we send people to catch what you'll have coming out next? Um, I would say probably the best places is Instagram, right? Instagram and Facebook. On yeah. Instagram, we're Capra Band. And then on Facebook, just, I guess, Same it's like, yeah, Capra Band. I just remembered one of those questions. Sorry? I just remember one of those questions. Oh, so okay. when I was doing my research on you guys, I caught uh, a really early, like a 2021 interview. And a question popped out to me. I'm like, this is a good one. We're going to ask it again. Uh, the statement was made in 2021, you're still breaking barriers as a female fronted band or dealing with the interactions of, of shocking people with your presence, right? Uh, do you feel that that's either have you adjusted or has the world adjusted since then in 2024? Do you feel any differences on that? Um, I think honestly, in a lot of ways, I've adjusted. I think before uh, when we kind of first started touring, I almost in a way like felt the need to kind of like present myself extra hard and like do extra good because it was like, oh, well, I already have this like obstacle. I so I, everything else needs to be perfect because there is a magnet glass on me now Mm -hmm. Um, but at this point I'm kind of just at the point where it's like I'm tired like I just want to play shows to the best of my ability Um, and that's all I can do and if people don't like it you know it's probably just not for them and that's fine it's okay 
you know, and now I, I think at this point, um, I'm just allowing myself to uh, just be and just do what I can and um, basically just be a regular musician. I don't think that obstacle will ever go away. Like, I wish it would. Yeah. I hope it would. But right. I don't I don't know that it will because we've had bands like Candace yeah. from Walls of Jericho and you, you, you've got all of these awesome bands. I don't even like saying female front end. Right. It, is, it, it like, sticks in your mouth weird. Yeah. yeah. It does. Uh, and it's just like, they've been doing it for so long and so many other bands are doing it. It's just, you know, you have you have that the group of people and you have the people that love music and they don't give a shit. And then you've got people that just want to hear the same thing over and over and over. It is what mm. it is, yeah. And I definitely tell myself that if it wasn't me, like if they weren't angry at me for existing, it would be someone else. Amen. And so I yeah. definitely I definitely don't take anything personally at this point because it's usually never personal. <laughs> It's just it's, it's them. Yeah. They're the problem. Right. Well, I literally, I very much thank you for your time tonight. Yeah. Thanks for having us come out and do this. I can't wait for you guys to see the video that we've got. Yeah. And I'm, uh, you're regionally local. You guys aren't all that far away from us. I'm yeah. sure we'll have a shot to speak again in the future. Um, if there's anything else you want to plug, this is a shot. Otherwise, can I please get a, uh, you're watching Deep Video Live. And if not, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything. I'm plugging my podcast. Plug it. Oh, Let's right. go. So I have a horror movie podcast Get out of here. that me and my friend talk about uh, just horror movies, basically, and other dark shit, so paranormal stuff. That's uh, crazy. Like that. yeah, so when, I was do- I was, Sorry? when I was doing my research and heard you speak for the first time, I'm like, oh, god damn, she's got a broadcast voice. Um, so to hear you say that you've got that, yeah, to hear you say you got the podcast, I'm, yeah, exci- called, uh, I'm excited. Yeah, Terror Takeover on Instagram, or Terror Takeover um, on YouTube for Terror Takeover, so yeah, just yeah, look that up. Also, oh, yeah. don't talk to me from June 21st to the 27th. I'll be playing Elden Ring DLC. Okay. <laughs> right on. You must solo her. Hell yeah. <laughs>